Hey everyone, welcome to the second video of my factorial troubleshooting series. So today we are troubleshooting an image server in which my clients are seeing latency for one of the endpoints. So let's see what those endpoints are exactly. Uh, the first endpoint that my, that my server supports is it's an upload image endpoint where a user just uploads an image and server saves it onto the disk. Second one is upload and encode where my uh, users, my clients upload an image, server performs some resize operation on it and then they uh, the server saves the image. Our clients seeing latency for this upload and encode endpoint. Okay, so let's start the server first. Okay, server is running on port 5000. Now I want to start some clients. I have modified this client code as compared to my previous video. So now I don't have to give URL as a parameter or something. I can just give some option and uh, client will kind of will understand that. So I'm making request to the upload endpoint. As you can see, I'm seeing some latencies of around 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Nothing that, nothing that much. Now make request to another endpoint that is upload and encode. So I'll make request to that as well. Uh, so you can now see it is seeing some latencies of around 0 0.81, 0 0.82, 0 0.7. Right now let's say something happens with your server. And suddenly a client started seeing high latency on one of these endpoints that is that one upload and import. So let me do that as well. Um, I'll make a request to the chaos endpoint that will cause something. And what that something is, we'll find out later in the video. Uh, so now you can see the latency for this upload and import client has started rising. You can see we are seeing the latencies of around 1.5% uh, 1 1.5 second and it is consistent. If you have a look at these latencies for upload image, they are just the same as they were before 0 0.08, 0 0.05, nothing that much. Now uh, you'll get a client, client complaint for that for sure. Now how to troubleshoot? As such into the server. As soon as you're into the server, first thing that you want to check is up. You want to have a look at the load averages. So I can see right now there's a load average of around 0 0.78. Nothing that much. Let's check that again one more time. 0 0.96. And you can see this load average value is rising. If I check this again, I'm pretty sure it's gonna uh, yeah, reach above 1, 1.13. So this means, and if I comp compare this with the number of cores I have, I have only one core on this machine. So this load average means I have some process that are waiting for CPU. If you don't know what load average exactly are, have like, click on this i button and have a look at this video. Good. Uh, so load averages are rising. I need more detailed view of the system, right? I'll, I can check top. In top, uh, very first pro, load averages, nothing that, that much. Number of tasks, we are not interested in that. We are interested in CPU utilization, yes. If you have a look at the first value, we can see around 96%, 95%, some user space process is using the CPU. System kernel space process, nothing that much. Nice value, zero, and everything else is zero. It is just some user space process that is taking a majority of the CPU time, right? If I have a look at these trending processes, I can see Python 3 is doing something, but I don't know which Python 3 command exactly, which process exactly. So I'll press C. That will show these file paths exactly. So I can see server.py is taking majority of the time. Although sometimes what happens, top may by default doesn't sort the input on the basis of uh, this CPU utilization. So in that case, you can press Shift plus P and you'll get these processes sorted by the CPU utilization that they are taking, right? So till now we have a fair idea that Python 3, like server.py is doing something, right? Here another thing, interesting thing to note in top is that this percentage that we are seeing over here, it might exceed 100%. Now you say how that's possible. That's possible because this percentage is actually a cumulative value across or the aggregated value across all the cores. Let's say I have four cores, then I can see a percentage value of up to 400 over here. So that might happen. Now we might want to get a more look, uh, more detailed idea, right? Like which core exactly is being utilized. If it is just one core, if, if we are, if we have four cores and the utilization is at hundred, hundred percent, then we don't care much. Just one core is utilized. That is still good to get this idea, this core level idea more clearly. What you can check is, uh, you can check up uh, H top. H top will see utilization per core. So I can see I have only one core and it is trending at hundred percent. So which means my system is under heavy load and, this, and, and like it is short on CPUs, right? Now, what I can do is I can check another command that, that, that is a top, a top, 
this will take a while for this command to actually populate the statistics and this one is useful because it highlights everything that is like not good Every, everything that is uh, overutilized be it cpu disk or memory so you can see it has highlighted cpu that is around 96 percent also it is showing us same python 3 server.py is using that right another command now uh, like we have an idea that my process the server.py process is doing something but again what the work that it is doing is it legitimate is it something that is it is it uh, it's supposed to be happen or is it some error or some bug right we want to get more process level idea now what this process is actually exactly doing and for that there is an interesting command that is s trace as what s trace does is it will display all the system calls that your process is making in the real time right we need to give it the pid and we can get the pid from top i can see the pid is 8503 so i can do sudo s trace minus p and 8503 now you can see it is displaying all the system call that this process is making but still i cannot conclude anything from over here i can see some few text calls some accept and but still i cannot get any idea what is happening from this and if the if anything that is happening it's supposed to be happening or not right we want to get more detailed view we want to get like which function is causing that particular utilization which function is spending most amount of time on cpu so here's something called cpu profiling that comes into picture and also frame flame graphs now what flame graphs are exactly to understand that we first need to understand what a process call stack is okay uh, if we have a look at this then we can see that this, this is some kind of stack it's uh, we we always read it from the top and move to the bottom but what is it exactly let's say you have a process a c program that has a main main function every c program has to have a main function right then you are writing a code to add two numbers then you might need to call another function inside that main program and inside the main function that is add so if i have a look at the process call stack at any moment of the time i'll notice add at the top then main at the bottom and if add calls some more function let's say add two numbers or add three numbers then i'll see that add two add three numbers at the top then add below those and main uh, in the bottom right so what is happening is the function that starts calling it will be uh, like in the in the bottom then as it is its parent will place above the stack right so if you have a look at this stack then you can see the current is the function that is currently being executing parent is the one that called this function grand grandparent is the one that called this parent function and below that is the it's, it is a grand grandparent that calls the grandparent function right it happens this way now let's say i take this call stack samples at some amount of time at a fixed interval right let's say twice in one second something like that let's say i took the uh, process call stack i captured the process call stack two times in a, in a second then I get the two call stack at time t0 and at time t1. Now I place this call stack parallelly and I connect the columns that are for the same function. Like I'll connect this main main column, I'll collect connect this foo foo column and like that. So if you do this, like if you do so many call stack captures, arranges them in similar fashion one after another and then color those accordingly, then what you will get is a flame graph, right? This is like this flame graph is for a bash uh, for, for a bash process. You can see below we can see bash. As we start up, we can see different uh, another function like execute command. Bash is a shell, right? It takes a command and it executes them. So execute command, execute internal, and all of those. Right? Now we like uh, like what do we what do we need next? We need to create a flame graph for the current R, like for the current process that we have. That is server.py. For Python, there is a module called PySpy that we can use. So uh, again, we need the PID. Let's see the what's the PID of server.py. Uh, so it is 8503. Next, we need to start the PySpy. So PySpy. Oh, let's start this sudo. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. PySpy record minus O is the path or the uh, it's the path for the SVG that it will generate. It will basically generate an image 
uh, that flame graph image so i'll name it profile 2.svg then i need to give it the pid the pid is 8503 so now it is running it will sample the it will collect the call set data at different amount of time and and it is going to generate a flame graph from that we let it run for some time okay let's cancel let's quit this now we can see we have a profile 2.svg saved already we want to get that profile 2.svg from the server no or like onto onto my onto my laptop right i can just do sftp to the server then i can do a get profile 2.svg we have flashed it i'll exit over here i'll move that profile 2.svg to desktop then i can directly access it from the from my chrome itself uh, okay so in this flame the one thing that you want to notice is the rectangular box that have the maximum length because that symbolizes the function that is taking maximum amount of time on your cpu so i can see chaos is spending around 21.38 percent of its time on cpu but this chaos function is actually related to that chaos endpoint that i called earlier but we are interested in the upload and encode endpoint because we want to see what is causing latency in for that particular endpoint right so we'll move to the right we'll again see chaos endpoint is there we'll move further then we can see there is upload and encode it is taking around 33.16 percent of the cpu utilization let's see which function is this particular function is calling it is calling encode function that is taking 25.94 percent that seems significant we me we move even further down the stack we'll see the resize function is what it is taking 16.63 percent so that gives me an idea that there is something wrong with this encode function this should be enough for the development team or for yourself to actually figure out which where is the bottleneck exactly there in your code right so next step i have an idea now which function is it i can just go to my server server code and see what is happening exactly so we saw in the flame graph that encode image is something that is uh, that has the bottleneck right and specifically image resize this resize function right now looking at this we can see what is happening when a user uploads the image the cpu or the server tries tries to resize the image to a smaller size and then that resizing operation is something that is costly that resizing operation is it's taking significant amount of the resources that's the reason we are seeing latency on the client side for this particular endpoint whereas the upload image endpoint is doing nothing it just uploads the image to the server and server saves it to the disk nothing else so that's the reason it is in that's the reason there is no latency at all for basically for this function because it is not doing anything that is cpu intensive it is just doing something that is causing some load on the io nothing else thank you guys i hope this video was helpful for you you, you get to learn about flame graph and all if you want to see similar content and if you are interested in more troubleshooting videos like this please subscribe to the channel hit that like button and i'll see you next time thank you so much